Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our five minute histories videos. Um, and if you are turning in sort of real time, uh, today is the Friday before Labor Day. And I know that Labor Day doesn't mark the official end of summer, but in my book it kind of does. And that means that we've made it through an entire spring and an entire summer, six months of crazy COVID times, um, doing these videos, uh, helping neighborhood associations with historic preservation projects, everything else we do, um, we've made it through this last six months and we've done it um, largely because of you all so a sincere thank you for tuning in for sharing your video sharing these videos with friends and family for sending in suggestions and and criticisms um, and for donating large and small on behalf of my colleague Molly and our board of directors, a very sincere thank you uh, for reaching, for allowing us to reach this milestone. All right, Baltimore streetcar system. I have to start with another quick thanks to a friend of mine, David Dittman. I found this little pamphlet, and let me show you. It's uh, it's actually not so little. Um, published in 1994, uh, uh, it's called "The Architecture of the Baltimore Streetcar System" by David Dittman and Bernard Sachs, and it documents really great research. Documents um, structures associated with the streetcar era, and it's just as good today as it was in 1994. So thanks, Dave. All right, we are here. Uh, uh, behind me is a, a former streetcar barn, and we'll get to that in a second. Um, it was built in 1910, but our streetcar system starts on July 26th, 1859. Um, pretty early, but by no means the earliest streetcar system in the country. Um, back then, these were horse-drawn streetcars, also called omnibuses. Um, back in 1660, uh, a gentleman named uh, Pascal, um, those of you who are mathematicians will know his name, uh, Blaise Pascal, I think is how you say it. Um, he's got a triangle named after him. Um, he invented essentially what amounts to probability theory, all sorts of great stuff. He also started the, what we believe is the world's first streetcar system in Paris, um, but he was a better mathematician than a businessman. He started jacking up the prices and the good folks in uh, Paris decided that rather walk than pay his uh, exorbitant prices and his, his company failed. But back in Baltimore, our horse-drawn horse uh, car system does really well. And in 1885, we reach a breakthrough. This is uh, when the first commercially operated electric streetcar runs. Baltimore has the first. Um, and it runs between 25th and Howard Street, which I think was then called Oak Street, and a bit about 40th and Rowland. And that was the first in the country. Another big breakthrough comes in 1888, but not in Baltimore. It comes in Richmond. A gentleman named Frank Sprague, who's a naval engineer, comes up with a bunch of inventions that basically uh, do a, uh, allow a grid of wires, electric wires, um, above a city to uh, transfer power down to the streetcars and do it really efficiently. And so he goes to Richmond and electrifies the city's entire streetcar system. And that shows that cities could have a coordinated and unified public transportation system in electric streetcars. Back in Baltimore, we're not so quick to take that up. Our horse-drawn uh, companies decide that the future is um, not with horses, but also not with electric. Uh, they decide that uh, cable cars are the way to go. And yes, I said cable cars. Just like in San Francisco, we had an extensive cable car system with wires running, cables running underground, pulling cars along mechanically. That was monstrously expensive, and it almost bankrupted those companies. In fact, our cable car system only ran from 1881 to 1899. Um, there's a neat little remnant of it, a, a huge wheel down in Otter a little park in Otterbein if you want to check that out. But by, 18, by about 1900, the horses were out um, and streetcars were in, uh, cable cars were out too. Um, and streetcars were sleek and they were fast and they were really great. They didn't produce manure but they also broke down all the time. And so they needed barns to house them. And so out went the horses from the horse barns and in went the streetcars and those became known as car barns. That's where we got that term car barn. Um, there are a couple wonderful car barns. There's one uh, across from Carroll Park, um, built by the United Railway and Electric Company. That's enormous. The MTA now uses it for bus maintenance. And the one behind me, I'm at the southwest corner of uh, uh, Druid Park, and uh, behind me is another United Railway and Electric car barn um, and uh, passenger station as well. Still here, really great. Um, I think the city's Department of Public Works uses it for offices and uh, wonderful ample parking below. Um, 
the other thing the streetcar system produced were was powerhouses, and we know a few of those. One is the power plant uh, on Pratt Street at the Inner Harbor, where Barnes & Noble has a bookstore. I think, sadly, uh, I heard that it was closing. Uh, but the other one is on Charles Street, and many of us will know that as the Charles Theater. That started out its life as a powerhouse. Um, all right, well, we did not keep our streetcars forever. Um, in, uh, in World War II, uh, a company owned by General Motors was buying up all of the streetcar systems in the country, including in Baltimore, and then systematically tearing them apart, tearing up tracks and whatnot. Um, and ours, uh, General Motors, of course, made motors and chassis and all the stuff for cars, um, not for, and, and they were replacing it with a bus system, I'm sorry. So they made all that stuff for buses. Um, they didn't make parts for streetcars. So they uh, had an economic self-interest in demolishing streetcar systems, including ours. Um, our final streetcar and uh, uh, ran, and I want to read this quote um, uh, to you, was, uh, where, where, where to go? Um, was on 1963, November 3rd, 1963, the number 7407 uh, made its final run into the barn, um, sadly. And and one of the riders on those final uh, days of the final day of the streetcar was a woman named Dorsey Rhodes. Her father drove the number eight car, and she is quoted as saying, "It's kind of sad to see them tearing it all apart. Why ruin it?" And I think those of us who uh, still love the streetcar system uh, will repeat that: "Why ruin it?" We're still puzzling over that. Um, but I'm going to end on a, a, a up note today. Um, just three years after the streetcar system was demolished and replaced by a bus system, um, the Baltimore Streetcar Museum got its start. And today, uh, however many, it was started in 1966 as all volunteers. Today, it is still all volunteer, um, closed uh, during COVID. Uh, but when it opens up, if you want to uh, learn everything you wanted to know about streetcars and even ride on some streetcars, historic streetcars, um, that's the place to go on Falls Road. So thanks so much. Um, thanks for joining us this spring and summer, and we will see you after Labor Day.